And, and sometimes that means saying no or running interference with your bosses, right? Because they have a different list of, of you know, deliverables and objectives and, and whatnot. And I think that in, in your career, you know, without going into a ton of detail, but that was a big part of your job as a leader is to run interference and protect the people that are working for you. Would, would you agree? For, for sure. Yeah. Like in my old fire chief job, that was like the number one priority, right? Um, you're, we're dealing with mostly volunteer firefighters. They have to be protected from everything at all costs. Uh, not just the dangerous stuff, not just running into fires, but, you know, from the people that say not nice stuff on social media to the pressures that come from the budget uh, or equipment purchases or, right, uh, at the end of the day, they just want to come and help out. They don't want to have all that other pressure. Well, every leader at every company has the same sort of stuff. Uh, some things you got to get help with and you can put to your people. Uh, some pe Some things you can't. And you've got to take that on your shoulders. And, and that's tough. And so as the leader, um, you really got to protect yourself. You got to, got to practice some, you know, self-health and things like that. Uh, are you talking to somebody, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm not just talking about going home and talking to your wife or your husband or whoever you got at home, if you have someone at home, if you're lucky enough to have that. But who else uh, in your peers, uh, your friends, you know, your coworkers, who, who else can you talk to? Uh, and, and this pandemic for me, uh, you have to find those positive things. And a lot of those positive things are reaching out and talking to people that I, I don't get a chance to talk to every day, but checking on them, having them check on me, uh, you know, having phone calls back and forth that you don't always have. And that's all part of, um, you know, being a good person. And, and so why don't leaders reach out? Like why, I, I have my own theories behind it because we're always our own worst enemies, right? We say, take care of yourselves, take care of yourselves, hydrate, you know, go talk to somebody. And then it, like, we're the last ones to do it. And then you just get somebody, Hey, idiot, when have you talked to somebody? Oh, that's a good point. I'm different. <laughs> so, so what, you know, so yeah. why don't leaders typically do that? It, I mean, it's tough being at the top. We all know that, right? I mean, as a leader, I think you're so busy taking care of everybody else and making all those decisions and trying to keep the ship running that uh, sometimes it gets away from you. Um, I can tell you from my own experience that that's for sure happened to me in my career. Um, you know, you just get to that point where you, you really can't fix everybody's problems anymore. And, and that starts to crush down on you. And so then what do you do with that? Right. And, but it is, it's important. I mean, you got to reset and I, I'm not saying that you have to go away for a week uh, right now. That's almost impossible. Right. So, uh, but you, you might have to take an hour and just say, Hey, I'm not going to answer any phone calls for an hour. I'm not going to answer any emails for an hour. I'm going to go and do something different. I'm going to engage in a different way. Maybe I'm going to go for a run. Maybe I'm going to watch a TV show. Maybe I'm going to go play with my kids or walk my dog. It doesn't really matter, but you have to find those times to disengage. And I know that everybody thinks that there's times where everything is so important and everything has to get decided right now. Um, but I can tell you that during a pandemic, there's times to take an hour for yourself. Um, you know, this is watching a train wreck in slow motion. Yeah. You absolutely know that it's going to be terrible at the end, but it's happening so slow that uh, it's really hard to watch sometimes. And so uh, yeah. You've got to take that time. So, and, and I think to add on to that, it's important that you tell people that you're taking that time because as leaders, would you agree that we need to walk the walk? And if we're going to say something, we need to have the integrity to, to follow up. So if you are going to check out for an hour or two or a day, have the courage to say that, Hey, I'm, taking care of myself. Would you agree that that's also important? For sure. I, I can remember one of the toughest discussions I had during the 2011 fire was uh, on day six. Uh, we kind of got the word that um, everyone needed to take a break. And so everyone was going to be cycled out uh, 48 hours leave. And it was non-negotiable. And so, you know, you can imagine to go in and, you know, these people have been fighting a war for six days. A lot of them lost houses, their friends, their family. There was nobody that was untouched by this. Um, and so, uh, I, you know, I, I just said, hey, you know, we have to protect ourselves. We have to take care of ourselves. And so basically, um, I'm going and these people are going with me. 
and and we're going right and then when that's over here's the next list and when that's over here's the next list and it's non-negotiable there'll be the people that stamp their feet and yell and scream and you got to do what you got to do and that's okay i'll, I'll take it um, but at the end of the day uh, i'm going to be the first one to go and so there's no reason for anybody else to say that they don't have to go and i think a lot of people once you tell them to go that's different than them voluntarily doing it because you're forcing them and to them that gives them an out as well right like so there's a pride thing within that but in my experience just like yours you have to tell people you know put the bone down and walk away for a little bit that is an order and in fact i've never had to be direct in any other circumstance going back until it comes time to tell somebody to take a break like yeah. it just if i rattle through my mind I'll, that's that's when i've had to be heavy and would is that the same for you it, it is for sure and you know i think in the, the big disasters that you and i are used to um you know there's lots of people coming to help and things are going on and, and there's windows to go and do that the trouble with this one is that slow motion part mm -hmm. um you know it, it's really like we've been watching this train crash into a car for two months now and uh, every day you wake up and go, did it hit? No, not, not quite yet. And, and it's going to. And so it's really hard to disengage. I mean, another thing is where do you go when you disengage? You're supposed to be at your house or just in your office and you're not having all of this, you know, uh, social interaction that we're used to. Uh, you know, you can't run away to Mexico for a week holiday. You can't uh, go to Calgary for the weekend and, and hang out at the hotel you can't you know there's all these things that you might have been able to do that you can't do so people are being forced to find other things um, and that's tough because a lot of leaders and I mean a lot of leaders we're basically workaholics you know we love this we're, we're working every day at least some and when you tell us to stop well, we're not that interested in that <laughs> we, we love to lead we love to work we love to do the job we're you know we're we're dedicated we're committed we're we're into it and so to leave and try and go do something else what am i going to go do yeah especially when hey jamie let's go for a beer uh we can't <laughs> can't do that right? you know? we can't, and we can't go to our friend's house and hang out with him right you know? right like we're i guess you and I, we can have on a computer right yeah that's it so we should have done this over a beer you know, <laughs> that taking a shot good. each time. I don't know. <laughs> so let's switch gears a little bit. I'm curious because, you know, the Jamie of 2011 and 2020 is a different Jamie from a leadership perspective than new officer. So what was the, the new officer Jamie Coots like in terms of leadership, if you even thought about it in that term? So then I want to take us from there and, and, you know, we'll fast forward, we'll go back to the future a little bit. And sure. so you, you get on the job, what was leadership to you when you were young? Uh, you know, I think even to that point, I, I'd come away from the deputy job, which is like purely operational to the fire chief job, which is more administrative and less operational where I am. Um, and uh, I really had no idea, I think at that point, what leadership meant, right? I mean, I'd taken some, some, uh, classes and, and some university stuff and I'd taken my fire training and read some books and you know read some magazines and but like true real leadership I wasn't really given any training I came up through the ranks and um, really time was a measure of how good of a leader you were going to be which is a terrible way to base you know solely if you're going to be a good leader or not right um, and so I, I think that uh, you know if I knew then what I know now, right? Hindsight is 2020 and, and it's fantastic. Um, you know, I think though also is maybe I wasn't open to hearing all those lessons, right? And, and why not? Yeah, well, one was, I was young. I was a young fire chief, right? I, I got a, a big position at a young age. Um, two, I think that, uh, well, I'll just throw it out there. Ego, turf, time and money. Right. That's one of my favorite things to talk about. And I don't think way back then that I understood that those four things had such big implications. And so um, what were they again, just for everyone? <laughs> ego, which I had a big one. Turf, 
right? Fighting all the turf wars all the time. Uh, time that you're in a race for time or out of time and money. And money is always a powerful factor. Um, you know, if you took money out of the equation right now, everyone would stay home and it would be no problem. Yeah, true. Right? True. Money is a big driver right now. How am I going to pay for everything I got? And so what role did ego play as Jamie, the young leader? And just so you know, this is also Daryl, the young leader, but <laughs> we're, we're talking yeah. to you. So. I, think it's, I think it's, yeah, I think it's a lot of us, the young leader. <laughs> Um, you know, at, at the end of the day, I think that uh, I'd had a pretty good career up till then. I, <clears throat> I was a decent firefighter. I'd learned a lot of things at a young age. Uh, we'd had a lot of successes. We'd knocked a lot of fires down. We'd stopped a lot uh, in their tracks. And I think that that success builds a, builds a bit of, uh, I think, that success builds an ego. And so, um, you, you know, whatever is going to happen, it's no problem. We got this. It doesn't matter if it's a flood or a fire or a car accident or whatever's going on, you know, we got this. And so I'd had a, a pretty good career and a great fire department and, uh, we, we'd crushed it, you know? And so my ego was pretty big. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and that's not an indictment by any stretch. I think that's completely normal because I look at my own journey when I became a leader or leaders, I'll use air quotes on that. Um, it was always about me, right? It was about me being in charge. It was about me being able to do other, you know, make decisions and look at me. Everybody supports me to a certain extent. Um, and also too, I think we're all a product of our environment from when we, you know, the, the model that we look to is typically our own leadership. And to us, that's what leadership was. And as we grew up, it was that bombastic, leader-centric, confident, almost arrogant, um, lead from the front kind of individual, which served us really well. But let's now jump to current day Jamie Coots. What, what has changed there? Obviously, your ego is still raging, <laughs> but... <laughs> No, but cool. you're able to keep it <laughs> hidden a yeah. little bit more. You know, I, you know what? I think it's that hindsight stuff, right? So I think that, uh, you know, as a young kid, we moved uh, every 12 to 18 months. That was just a thing in our family because of my dad's work. And so, you know, we had to go to new schools all the time. So we learned to make friends fast. You know, by lunchtime on the first day, I'd have 50 friends because I didn't know when I was moving again. So you had to move fast. And, you know, so you take that and you, you make that a part of it. Um, you know, like really caring and really, but doing it quickly, right? So now when we get new teammates on the team, I want to know all about them, what's going on, who's in your family, how many kids you got, what's, <clears throat> you know, I learned that lesson young and I apply it better today. Um, you know, I think that you learn over time that there are, there's always someone better than you, right? It's just how it goes. So instead of worrying about measuring yourself to that person, why don't you just measure yourself against how you were yesterday, last week, last month, last year. And as long as you continue to do better and learn and, and progress, uh, I think that's good enough. And, and so maybe some of that's age, some of that's learning through these different things that have happened. Um, but you, you really start to be able to look inside of yourself and say, hey, I, I got to do better, right? Um, you know, for me, I've had some really stressful times. And so we've had to, I've had to go and figure out how to handle stress differently, right? Um, you know, to how, how am I going to move from one day to the next without, let, without letting that bottle up, right? Without feeling like I'm going to have the big jammer every second day. You know, how, how do you handle that stress? How do you move forward? And, and, so, and so let's talk tactics around that because, you know, that's an important point that we typically don't don't talk a lot about. So what does that look like for Jamie Coots in terms of stress management? Because back in the day, it was just go for beers, don't talk about it and, you know, do your next call. But what does it look like now? Uh, uh, for me, hobbies. I think I had to go out and get some hobbies, some stuff that uh, I could do that wasn't work, right? I'd be the first one to tell you workaholic seven days a week, 12, 14, 16 hours a day uh, and wishing the days were longer so I could do more. Right. Um, so taking more time off, uh, taking time with my family, um, you know, finding some ways to, it might sound weird. Some people drink, some people do other stuff. I, I like to watch a couple hours of TV, 
I like to disengage from this world and move into another world and kind of get my brain on that and then go to bed and, and not be thinking about work. Um, you know, I think that uh, I would always cheat my sleep schedule, right? So if I was working 16 hours, then I'd say, okay, that's okay, because tomorrow we'll sleep in. And so it's like sleep in two extra minutes and that was good enough, right? So, um, you know, now I, I make sure I get my solid six every night and, and uh, go from there. Um, you know, exercising was a huge one. And, I didn't and, and even when you talk about time off, it's it's got to be guilt-free time off, right? And I, and I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but that was a big part of it too, where it's one thing to take your time off you yeah I'm, I'm not working but you're still on your phone exactly. you know at least even monitoring email but now it's probably at least for me when i'm when i'm checked out i'm checked out and i also know that i'm not so arrogant to think that just because i'm not there things aren't going to run well you know but exactly. um but i when i take my time off it's it's relatively guilt-free and what are your thoughts on that would you agree no, I, I think that it's, uh, yeah, guilt-free is a good way to put it, right? I mean, you put an hour into a workout, that's for you. It's to make you better, healthier, um, better, a better person ready to go. Um, so I, you can't feel guilty about that. Um, I, I think that people may try, outside influences may try to make you feel guilty, you know, that you're not the first one there and you don't stay till the end. And the, um, but some of that's just in your head too. Right. And so we got to find that way to balance that. Um, you know, I, I get paid this many hours. I don't mind donating this many hours in a week, but the rest of the time I got to go and find something else to do. Right. If you live, breathe and die for work, that's exactly what will happen. You'll all your memories and everything that you do will be about work. Uh, there's lots of other important things. It's easy to lose track of that, especially during everything that's going on right now. Um, you know, you could just be looking on your phone and, and reading social media things and news updates 24 hours a day if you want, right? I mean, the world is, something's happening in the world all the time. Uh, the problem is you, you need to disengage from that and go and think of other things. You can't just be thinking about this. And, and I think self, or not even selfishly, but we also have to recognize that if we're not taking self-care, we're actually doing ourselves a disservice, but the actual team and the job a disservice. And, and I know that you've gone through periods of your life where basically burnout for lack of a better word. Um, so what, what impact does that have where you're just as a leader pushing yourself way too hard and you're just not, you're not disengaging. What, what impact does that have on, on you and the people around you? Sure. I, I think if, you know, just for me, I'll just take my life. If I look back, I mean, I wasn't an effective leader. Uh, it was a hair trigger guy. There, there was like physically, there was times I felt like I was having a heart attack. Um, you know, that it's, uh, and you get to that point, to that wall, I guess, where you're just not doing anybody any good. And so you got to make a change. You got to change the way you are, right? And so um, for me, I think as I went along, a lot of the things that I heard people say were, well, you're not the same guy anymore right? You don't act like you used to act. And, and so that bugged me because um, I liked being the person that I was. Uh, and so as that changed, um, I really didn't like that. I didn't, I didn't want to change. I didn't want to become all about work and become this leader that, um, you know, basically those leaders that I despised all my way up, right? Mm -hmm. I, I wanted to be a good guy that cared and, and was building a team and, and cared about the team. And so, um, I, you know, I think you got to, as a leader, decide what kind of leader you want to be and stay true to that. And mm -hmm. so if, you know, if you can work 16 hours a day for a couple of weeks on a big project, that's okay. But then don't let that become your life, right? You know, like right now it's busy and hectic and, you know, your plants trying to turn out a bunch of equipment or, you know, something that's going to help the cause. I, I get it. Go at it you know use that drive use that dedication and commitment but you can't do it forever and, and yeah, this really yeah. is a slow motion thing it's not you know it's a marathon right and yeah. so i don't want to lose sight of the fact when you said be the leader that you would want to be so how important is it for people to be deliberate with regard to what kind of leader do i want to be um 
yeah, what, is it, what, what do you think about that? Like, does it matter if I sit down and say, I want to be one that's respected? Like, who cares? Doesn't it just matter that you're doing the job? Yeah, I, to me, it matters, right? I, to each person, you have to decide. Um, you know, some people get off on being the jerk that nobody likes that runs around yelling at everybody. Um, that's not my way, but each person has to find their own way. And, and so for me, each time in my life that I went on and I lost my way, I wanted to get back to how I wanted to be. And there's lots of different ways to lead. Um, some are different than others. Some are better or worse. You could fight about it all day long. You could write a book on it, I guess, if you were Daryl Black. But, uh, but uh, you know, at the end of the day, you have to do, you do really have to think about who you want to be, what kind of leader you want to be. And, uh, you know, th these things, doesn't matter if it's a disaster or a pandemic or a flood or fire, um, you know, the type of person you are will just come out. It'll be louder and bigger um, than ever before during these kinds of things. And so, you know, if you're already that guy that yells and screams and micromanages and everybody hates, this isn't going to make it better for you. Right? Uh, there's, so. there's that saying that says uh, absolute power corrupts absolutely. But in my opinion, power amplifies what you are, just kind of like money, right? So I think the takeaway there is, is to really be deliberate on what kind of leader and person you want to be because then – correct me if I'm wrong, but that becomes your North star, right? So when you when you have lost your way to like what you had said, the reason people stay off the path is because they don't know what right looks like. And so from a leadership perspective, Jamie, what, what, what does a leader in your opinion, because you're right, it varies, but what does a leader have to be to be somebody that others want to follow? I think it's a few things, Daryl. I think you you got to look at what kind of team do you want, right? What, what kind of team are you trying to lead? Is it a small team, two or three people? You're running a small coffee shop. Is it a big team, a couple thousand firefighters? You're running a big city fire department. You know, is it a you know? And so, in whatever you're trying to do, what kind of team do you want, right? And so, you know, you probably want people that are dedicated. You probably want people that are committed to what you're doing. You probably want people to show up on time. You want them to do a good job. You want them to care. Well, if you want all of that from your team, you need to be that as the leader, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody else shows up at eight. You come in at nine. You're not really showing them much, right? Especially when you give them crap for being late. Like, hey, I heard you were in at 805 when meanwhile you stroll in exactly. with a Starbucks. Even if you're the owner or, or uh, you know, you, you have this ultimate power as the leader, um, you know, there's, there's still some responsibility to lead the way that you want your team to be, right? And so um, if you want to be respected, you have to be respectful, right? Mm -hmm. It's not, uh, you, everybody gets some with a title, but it stops at some. You got to earn the rest just like everybody else. Right. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're the prime minister or the president or the king or queen of your country, you, you get some for that. But then if you don't do a good job, you're still going to get crapped on. Right. Yeah. And so as a leader, it's the same sort of thing. You know, what, how do you want your team to run? How do you want your company to run? How do you want your organization to run? And then lead in a way that helps get that going. And so, you know, every time that I've worked in an organization where, things go off the rails, it, it's because of leadership. Lack of it, the wrong leadership, the wrong way, uh, accountability, you know, those kinds of problems. And so, and it's no different for everybody, right? So if you want to hold people accountable, you got to start with yourself. If you want a team that's dedicated and committed, you got to start with yourself, right? Yeah, and I think um, you hit it earlier with regard to you have to give or be what you're expecting of other people. And that, that's an important kind of um, guideline for people, I think. I, I really, really like that. So as we wrap this up, so Jamie Coots with X amount of years on the front lines, saving lives, the hero that is Jamie Coots. What advice yeah, would you give? I got give? the paper cuts to prove it. <laughs> that's a carpal tunnel. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what, what, what would you say to you know, the private sector 
you know, they're going through COVID right now, but crisis is different. You know, there will be something else coming up. Maybe it's downsizing corporately or it's explosion in size or whatever. And, and which in a way is, is a form of crisis. What would you tell, you know, the manager in the private sector, corporate Canada, corporate America, in terms of, if you were to sit them down for coffee for a couple of minutes, what, what would you tell them? Don't let this change you, you know, be, be the kind of leader that you want to be, figure out who that is and, and be that every day. And, and uh, don't let anyone else change you. Don't let anybody, anything else change you. Um, you know, if you got to make changes to make that work and make that happen, then make those changes and, and live with those changes. But at the end of the day, um, you know, you, there's a lot of people relying on you to be a good leader, right. To be a good boss. And uh, you, you got to make sure that you own that. Um, leadership is, it, it's tough. It's tough every day. You got to get up and drag your butt out there. And on the good days, it's easy. On the bad days, it's tough. On the worst days, it's even tougher. But uh, at the end of the day, every day, you got to drag your butt out there and, and do the best you can. And so the best you can has to be figured out, right? What is that? What kind of leader do I want to be? I love it. I love it. <sighs> Mr. Coots, my friend, fantastic. Thank you very much for being so open and uh, insightful. And uh, yeah, and I appreciate you, buddy. And I'm very grateful to have come into your your universe. It's It's been a good time. It has been. <laughs> All right, buddy. Well, thank you very much. We'll sign off right now. Thanks, Jamie.